Hey everybody, today we're going to take a quick look at Asteroid City. This is the latest movie written, directed, and etc. by Wes Anderson and stars Jason Schwartzman, Scarlett Johansson, and Brian Cranston. There are sort of two stories going on at once here. One story is about a playwright creating a show about a youth astronomy convention that takes place in the fictional town of Asteroid City, so named because of a meteor that once crashed there. And the other half is the play itself, telling the story of all these people that visit Asteroid City and their unexpected encounter with a UFO. And normally I might say something like, and then it gets weird, but it's Wes Anderson. It's weird from minute one. Even if his name was not all over the poster, I could have told you right away that this was a Wes Anderson movie. He has a very distinct style. With the weird visuals and the quirky behavior of the cast, this literally could not have been made by anyone else. And I enjoyed it, although I wouldn't swear that I understood it. But I'm not entirely sure that's the point. I think Wes Anderson movies are meant to be more experienced than understood. That's not to say there are not some obvious themes going on here. There's a sequence where the visitors to Asteroid City have to go through a quarantine period, which definitely brings back memories of COVID. There's a lot here about the creative process with all the behind the scenes stuff and the making of the play. You got your coming of age story with all these teenage astronomy nerds, and there's a bit of a romance going on with them and with some of the adults. And there's a lot about how we deal with grief, which is taken to absurd levels. Jason Schwartzman's character, Augie, or I should say his character in the play, takes about three weeks to tell his children that their mother has passed away because he just didn't know how to break it to them. I mean, who does that? And both Schwartzman and Johansson are definitely playing Wes Anderson characters. They're the kind of people who speak very quickly and directly, but they show almost no emotion on their face when they do it. Almost like they're trying to be authoritative, but they just can't be bothered to put forth the effort. In most movies, you'd probably say this actor doesn't know how to emote properly, or the director doesn't know how to pull the emotion out of him. With Wes Anderson, it's a deliberate choice. It's a weird choice. He's a weird guy. Bless him. Anyway, the movie is constantly flipping back and forth between the play and the behind-the-scenes stuff with the making of the play, and each one has its own visual style. The visual style of the play was very interesting. It's presented just like a movie would be presented. You got 360-degree views of the environments, there's no visible stage anywhere, and yet there's always a very obvious backdrop, and the sets look... Cheap isn't the right word, but they look like something that would be constructed for the stage and not for a movie. At least not for a movie released in 2023. It's simultaneously a movie and a stage play, and it just fucks with the mind. And the behind-the-scenes stuff is played like an old TV documentary. It's black and white, 4 to 3 aspect ratio, and you see many of the same actors that you see in the play sequences, except they're playing the actors that are in the play. So a lot of people in this movie are playing two roles. And there is a considerable amount of batshit crazy going on. Every morning, there is a high-speed police chase going through the only road in Asteroid City, and always in the same direction. Where do they come from? Where are they going? Why does this happen every day? Who knows? There's a bizarre moment where Brian Cranston, who is the narrator for all the black and white documentary stuff, inexplicably wanders into the play and is just like, Am I supposed to be in this part? And he and the actors just kind of stare at each other for a minute, and then he wanders off. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. There's also a very brief moment of nudity for Scarlett Johansson's character, which hilariously was followed by the movie basically spelling out for the audience that what you just saw was a body double. Don't get too excited. So yeah, uh, I don't know how Wes Anderson comes up with this shit. I really don't. But he is extremely weird and talented, and that's a delightful combination. And in the end, I did find this to be very funny and charming in its own quirky way. And if Wes Anderson is your bag, you will probably enjoy it too. If he is not your bag, this is not going to change your mind. But if he is, it's definitely worth seeing. And that's all I have to say about Asteroid City. Till next time, take care.